Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Week 38. Here we have a sagittal T2 fat sat image of the ankle and an axial T2 fat sat image of the ankle. And we have an obvious abnormality seen on these images. And the question that I have for all of you guys is, where do these tears most commonly occur? Is it at the insertion, two to six centimeters above the insertion, six to 10 centimeters above the insertion, or at the myotendinous junction? Where do these tears most commonly occur? And if we take a look at the sagittal T2 fat side image again, this is the tibia, the talus, the calcaneus. Here we have this dark structure here is the Achilles tendon, and it's inserting here onto the calcaneal tuberosity, but we can see this fluid T2 hyperintense signal within the substance of the tendon. And it's pretty much a full thickness tear because it involves the entire thickness from the anterior to the posterior dimension of the tendon here, right? So this in fact is the most common place where the tendon tears because this is an area of hypovascularity two to six centimeters above the insertion. So this is by far the most common place that Achilles tendon tears occur. And notice this is actually a re-tear because you can see surgical sutures here that are you know, suturing the tendon. So this person must have had a tear that they repaired and now it's retorn. And importantly, there's a lot of Achilles tendinopathy here. Notice that this tendon is very thickened. You know, usually people say that the AP dimension is more than six to eight millimeters. This is at least more than a centimeter, it's thickened. And also the anterior margin of this has a convex border. Usually the Achilles tendon anteriorly is flat or concave. So tendinopathy is also a risk factor for Achilles tendon tears. So very nice example of what Achilles tendon tear would look like. So these are much more common in males. We see this by far much more commonly in male um, because of some of the sports that males play. Um, this presents with getting kicked in the ba back of the calf. Sometimes you have a popping sensation. You have an inability to walk. Sometimes people have problems plantar flexing their foot. Uh, these are all associated with Achilles tendon tears. It's the most commonly ruptured lower extremity tendon. Very common sports injury that we see. And it's really common in sports like basketball and tennis where there's sudden starting and stopping. Now, of course, women can also get this tear, but you know, statistically speaking, you know, it's you know much more common in males. But obviously women play basketball, women play tennis. And these are my two most, you know, these are the sports that I love to play the most, you know, coincidentally. So it's very easy for me to remember that Achilles head and tears occur in basketball and tennis because these are actually the two sports that I play personally. And again, as I said, the tears occur in watershed areas. So typically two to six centimeters above the insertion onto the calcaneal tuberosity. And this is an area where there's less vascularity. And that's why that these areas are more prone to being torn in general. Now, there are a lot of risk factors for Achilles tendon tears. And you know, one of which is tendinopathy. Notice that this patient had tendinopathy. There was, you know, tendinopathy means degeneration of the tendon from overuse and microtrauma, chronic repetitive microtrauma. Typically that manifests as thickening of the tendon, intermediate signal on an MRI, or a convex anterior border of the tendon, as I showed you. Uh, certain sports like basketball, tennis, these all predispose to Achilles tendon tears. Having a pest cavus deformity or a high arching foot. Actually, this patient had a high arching foot. I encourage you to look back at the images. Uh, that's a risk factor as well. You know, certain systemic diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and gout can also give you or predispose you to having Achilles tendon tear. And certain medications like, you know, even fluoroquinolones or steroids can predispose to having Achilles tendon tears. And the treatment really depends on the location and the distance between the tendon stumps of the tear. So for example, if the tear is occurring at the myotendinous junction, that's usually treated conservatively. Uh, but if it's, if it's you know, more like you know, in the watershed area, that has a higher uh, chance of having operative repair. The other thing is, is that if the tendon stumps are more than one centimeter apart or diastatic, that usually indicates operative repair. If it's less than one centimeter apart, it can usually be treated conservatively. Now. If the diastasis or the separation between the stumps is even more than three centimeters, oftentimes we have to use a graph like a flexor hallucis longest tendon graph. That's the one that's most commonly used for repairs of Achilles tendons. If the diastasis is usually less than three centimeters, but more than one centimeter, then you can often do an end-to-end -end anastomotic suture of the tendon. So, you know, really there's a lot of factors when you're looking at Achilles tendon tear repairs. You should always report the thickness of the tear, exactly how far the tear is from the calcaneal tuberosity, the craniocarda dimension of the tear, all those things should be included in your report for the orthopedic surgeon to, you know, repair the tendon 
effectively. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.